We already socialized the police force and firefighters, so why not allocate some tax revenue to pay for emergency medical care and higher education? Granted, I'm not so naive as to think that all health care and all college should be free for everybody. I would set it up so that every tax-paying legal citizen of the United States gets a basic health care plan that covers EMTs, ambulance rides to the ER, the emergency room care itself, conventional treatments for life or death illnesses like cancer, and a limited number of regular checkups and cancer screenings. The cost to pay for people's medical bills like those things is immense. We spend the most government money on medical care. Medical care is bigger than our military spending. That's also assuming that if it is going to be as efficient as private care. The government does not have an incentive to have good care. I have a similar approach to education, but instead of being based on life or death, it's based on merit. We can debate which specific degree programs have enough merit to be tax funded, but it ultimately would benefit society if citizens were given the tools to succeed without worrying about being buried in student loan debt for the rest of their lives. I'm going to be making a correction in this video of an error I had in the original. All right, let's get to it. As you can see in this graph, it shows supply, demand, price, and quantity. When the government intervenes and gives loans out to students, that will increase the quantity, the number of students who can afford college, sort of. It's more like that they can actually go to college because they have the loans, but as you know, you have to pay those loans back. So when the government does this, that increases the demand. So to meet that demand, the schools increase their supply while also increasing their prices. And since they know the government can increase their loans to however much they want, they continually increase their prices as the years go by. So ironically, having the government pay for people's education, even if it's just only certain jobs like doctors, lawyers, stuff like that, it would still increase the prices. So there would just be more and more student loan debt for people trying to go into those jobs. And when more people are able to afford college, even if it's just by government giving them money to pay for that, they increase their prices. So instead, you have more student loan debt. I know the money has to come from somewhere, but budget cuts are made all the time by the government. For example, we spend ludicrous amounts of money on the military. I do think we spend too much money on the military. However, I don't think most of it or even a lot of it is wasted. According to politicalfact.com, we only spend around 16.2% on defense slash homeland security. While for health, we spend 28% and it's climbing. That doesn't even include social security, which is another 25.3%. So if you add Social Security with health, that is 53.3%. Over half of government spending. And it's only getting higher. We can't afford government health care or Social Security. No matter how much you think it's a good thing to have those, it's not practical. Also, if I'm not mistaken, government officials vote to give themselves raises all the time, on top of the money they get from corporate interests. So if that's true, there's another thing we can cut back on a bit. According to my sources in 2014 over 18,000 students graduated from medical school and let's take the lower end of the median debt of which they took on of 170,000 times that by the 18,000 graduates equals over three billion dollars a year now let's look at how many congressmen there are. In total, there's around 529, according to an article that was published in 2012, making an average income of $174,000 per year. But just for the heck of it, why don't we give them the pay of the Speaker of the House, which is at $223,500 a year. And then times that by the 529 congressmen. That equals that out to a bit over $118 million. So let's compare. $3 billion or $118 million, which sounds bigger. Of course, I don't actually support the government officials getting themselves bonuses or anything like that. 
However, saying that they make so much money in the sense that we could just cut all their spending and use that to pay for college is unrealistic. Venezuela? It's now on the brink of collapse, despite it being one of the most resource-rich nations in the entire world. Basic things like eggs, milk, flour, and toilet paper are either too expensive for the average Venezuelan or simply out of stock. Out of stock, mind you, democratically. So are they one of the most resource-rich nations in the entire world? Or are they a desolate wasteland devoid of the basic items that are so highly priced that most people can't afford them? Oh, they have the resources. It's just socialism made it far more expensive to have things like toilet paper and food. The reason how it is more expensive is because the government there made it more expensive to make that product. Because Venezuela has everything it needs to be able to have food. They have fertile land, water, and sunshine. But since the government has made it more expensive to operate a business, businesses are making very little profit, so they're not able to make nearly as much. That's what happens when you implement socialism. But the bottom line is that, at least in theory, the kind of democratic socialism that I support would still be an economically capitalist, democratic republic, just like America has always been. Dude, I hate to break it to you, but America has never been a democratic republic. The United States is, and has always been, a federal republic. Or as the CIA lists us under as a constitutional federal republic. What's more greedy than wanting to take from someone else something that you haven't earned? Do you honestly think that all the Fortune 500 CEOs and everyone in the richest 1% of Americans worked for literally everything they have and that none of them stole or inherited any of it? Well, do you assume that all of them stole or inherited it? The argument you made is- <laughs> First off, inheritance is a legitimate form of wealth. Down the line, someone had to work for that money. Also, 70% of rich families lose their wealth by the second generation, and 90% by the third generation. Also, it doesn't take much to be in the 1%. In my personal opinion, the 1% are not rich. For example, all it takes to be in the 1% in California is a little over $453,000 a year. And the average overall in the United States to be in the 1%, you have to make around $389,436 a year. That is a very good amount of money, even that. However, that's not rich, in my personal opinion. Because let's face it, rich is kind of subjective. For example, a person in Africa might consider me rich rich because I don't have to carry water to my village or I don't have to drink dirty water or go hungry a few days. Now what I would personally consider rich are the more one tenth or one hundredth of the one percent. You know, the people that make millions or even billions of dollars a year. The actual people who have private jets or limousines, not a well-off doctor who makes 500k a year. Rich people should pay reasonably more in taxes because they have more and because the wealthier the people we're talking about, the less an increase in their taxes will affect their lifestyle. Also, a lot of rich people get out of paying their taxes anyway by cheating the system or just being given tax breaks by people in the government. Like, oh, I don't know, a billionaire businessman turned reality TV host who somehow got elected president. Hmm, I think I sense a bit of hostility towards a particular person. Anyway, what is with people like yourself on the left who feel that the rich aren't taxed enough. What is a fair amount of tax on them? 30%? 40%? 50%? 70%? What is it? Why not just have a complete flat tax instead? Instead of punishing people who earned that money, why not just have a flat tax where everyone's taxed equally? To me, that sounds fair. And although I may not like the tax loopholes, well, if you were rich, I'm sure you would try and avoid having to pay taxes also, because I know I would. Now, so long as the people having their stuff taken away at gunpoint are in the minority, and the majority feels that they'll get to benefit from more said taken stuff, you'll always be able to win that decision through a popular vote and claim the moral high ground through democracy. I find it kind of funny that you are claiming the moral high ground while defending the wealthiest 1% in America, a group that is by no means victimized in any meaningful way and who has more than the remaining 99% put together. That's not an argument. And the reason why Crowder is taking the moral high ground is because he has the moral high ground. 
It is not fair to tax those people more because they worked for that money. I don't hate rich people any more than any other group of people, by the way. I just find their level of indulgence while their fellow human beings suffer in squalor all around them to be disgusting. Understandable, mind you, but still disgusting. I call <laughs> on that. To me, it sounds like you very much hate rich people. The same could be said for people like you and me. We indulge in stupid <laughs> which the poor people in Africa are dying of hunger and disease. Does that make us horrible people? <laughs> no. Being rich or well off does not make you a bad person, not even in the slightest. Well, that's gonna be it for today. If you liked this video, please give a like and share it. And also go to my channel and subscribe. The Warm Potatoes video is also over there if you want to check it out. And I'll see y'all later. <laughs>